Hi everyone! I'm going to show you how to paint this Christmas tree truck. I'm using an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas and I'm starting with this 3 quarter inch flat brush. For this painting I'm using the Decoart Americana Premium Paints and I'm going to start with the color Prussian Blue. This is a very rich, very dark blue. And I'm going to start at the top. So I'm painting the entire sky first and this sky is going to be a blend of a bunch of colors. We're going to eventually go almost all the way down and it's going to turn into this light pink color. So we're going to add different blues and pinks. So I went down about three fingers with this Prussian blue. Doing long horizontal strokes. Make sure that no brush marks are showing, just smooth out your strokes. And again, I went down about three or four fingers. So I'm going to add the color Seraline Blue to my palette and I'm not going to rinse that brush. I'm going to load that Seraline onto the brush so I have both the Prussian and the Seraline. And as I'm blending, you noticed I went very slow and careful right there to get that to blend. And um, this is wet on wet blending so right there where that Prussian and the Seraline meet, you're just going to kind of gently kind of blend the colors together by painting over the part where they meet. So the wet on wet will um, mix together onto the canvas. And as you're going down, you're loading more seraline. So we're going to have more pure seraline. And um, every once in a while, I'll go up and kind of blend it back up. Okay, so we have a nice fade of the Prussian to the seraline blue. Okay, and next, titanium white. So I'm just going to kind of drag some of this paint off as a lot of blue gunked on it. You could wipe it off too. I just dragged it onto the palette. But grab the titanium white and gently blend the area where that seraline and the white will mix. Um, and they blend together to create this sort of light blue. So the white is going to be used a lot right now to get the sky to be light in color. So that white is blending with the seraline blue and I'm just gently brushing it up to blend it with the, um, the rest of the seraline blue. And then as you go down, load your brush with more of the white and continue on the way down to the canvas. So the goal of this sky is ultimately it starts out dark at the top and gets light on the bottom. So yes, this video is going fast and you know this to pause. I try to make my videos under 45 minutes. So this painting is a probably, there's a lot of details in this painting. It's probably almost a two hour painting. So next, rinse your brush, get all the blue off. You might have to rinse it a couple times and grab the white. So now we want a more pure form of white and um, ultimately this white is kind of a base for the magenta that I'm going to be adding into it next. So I'm adding a whole lot of white here on the bottom and also if you don't want to do the magenta it's kind of optional too. So on the bottom there's four finger space left on the bottom. That's where the land is going to be and where the truck is going to be on the snow. So leave some space on the bottom. And then load your palette with primary magenta. So I'm going to load it. The white was still on there. It's double loaded with the white and magenta. And I'm going to add that magenta into the white. So that magenta is going to turn to this light pink color into the sky. So still four fingers of space on the bottom. Let that magenta blend into that base layer of titanium white and blend it up into the seraline blue a little bit. 
So we have a nice uh, blue, dark blue sky. It's, maybe it's nighttime at the top and it's slowly, maybe there's just the very end of a sunset. But this um, picture is going to be snowing as well. So, okay. And then I grab just a little bit more titanium white to get this bottom part to be light in color. At this point, I was being kind of picky about my colors blending. Um, but the reality is that a lot of the main subjects of the paintings are going to be covering up a lot of this. So I added a little bit more magenta on the bottom. And then you don't have to be um, picky about the horizon line because we're going to be defining that in just a bit. So in other words, you don't need to make that line down there perfectly straight. Okay, so I have my sky. Get this brush all rinsed off. And with the leftover paint on your palette, you can go ahead and paint the sides because we want this to dry just a bit. So mine dried just a bit. Fast forward about five minutes and there's my sides. I painted the sides and then I set it to the side and let it dry. So now I'm going to do snow. I'm going to use the back of my paintbrush, that same three quarter inch paintbrush I was using. It's got a nice thick handle to it and it makes perfect snowflakes or snowballs. Snow. We'll be painting snowflakes in the end. So I'm dotting the titanium white and if you press really firm, you get a larger one. And if you press lighter, you get a smaller one. So make them kind of varied all throughout the picture. I kind of didn't put very much in the middle bottom area because I knew that's where the truck was going to go. So next, I'm still using that three quarter flat and I'm gonna define the horizon line now. And because this is a snowy scene, I'd imagine that it's kind of a, a lumpy horizon line. So I'm just painting kind of a wavy line. Some of the curves stick up above that line that I did and some curve below. And then you want to go ahead and paint the rest of the bottom area with that titanium white and also keep it wet because we're going to do some blue blending on the bottom. So get a nice good coat or two of the titanium white, fill it all in. And then this is optional, but I'm going to show you something. So I still have white on the brush and I'm going to load it with the Seraline blue. I know my palette's really low here, but I'm dragging it so I mix the Seraline blue with the titanium white and at the very bottom of the canvas I'm just lightly brushing it. So since that titanium white on the bottom is still there and still kind of wet, it allows us to blend that blue very easily. So kind of like what we did with the sky. So just lightly brushing it and then I'm going to lightly brush it up, blend it back up into the white so it looks like the bottom is darker and the top is lighter. So again, that's optional. It just gives you a little bit of, uh, makes the painting look like it has a little bit of depth in it. Next, you want to wait for your painting to dry. Mine dried, so fast forward about 10, 15 minutes. Get it dry all the way because we're going to do the traceable and we don't want any wet paint on there. And this traceable is on my website in the traceable library. You can download the PDF, get yourself a sheet of graphite paper, and the truck is lined up on the lower right hand corner. So standard size computer paper, line it up corner to corner on the lower right. And then trace it and the image will transfer onto the canvas. So my concern was that maybe it would have been too dark in the back, but actually mine showed up fine with the dark graphite paper. Okay, so 
there it is. You can see it sort of on the camera there where it was all traced. So we're gonna bring out some different size brushes. This is a number four bright brush. It's a flat brush. It's about a quarter inch thick or wide. And it's a 10 zero liner, so lots of details. And these are the Royal Ling and Lingnickel Zen brushes. So I load my palette with cadmium red, medium, quinacridone red is optional. I'll talk about that in a second, why it's optional. And titanium white. So I have two different color reds on there and the white. And then I'm going to load my bright brush, the number four bright with the red and the corner with the white. So I double loaded the brush. And the reason for this is because um, I call this lazy shading. I don't even know if that's a term, lazy shading, but letting the colors blend together and just kind of do their thing is what we're doing here with the white and the red. If you did the teal truck, you kind of know what we're doing here. Um, the red does a little bit different with the white. So um, just kind of bear with me here. So I'm starting with the fenders of the truck. So I'm going to go to the other fender in just a second. Um, the reason why the quinacridone is kind of optional is... Um, well, I grabbed it because I wanted to see if it would help with the contrast because the quinacridone re red is a little darker than the cadmium red. So if you want to do the same, you can just find a darker red and a lighter red and use those two colors. But I think it would work if you just wanted to do the cadmium red and not the quinacridone red or any darker red. So it's up to you if you want to simplify it or not. And I did the other fender. And then I grabbed the quinacridone red and you can kind of see what happens here. So since that's a different shade of red, see that fender I did with the cad red and this one I'm doing with the quinacridone red, it kind of stands out next to each other because we want some of the parts of this truck to stand out and not just be a solid color red. That's what the white is helping with as we're doing the shading. And this part right here of the truck, I'm making it slightly darker than that fender right there so it stands out. Um, so I grabbed that little bit of white right there to kind of make it stand out. And then I'm dragging it down there. So the direction of the strokes go in the direction of the object that you're filling in. Then I'm going to go this direction to form the shape up here with the truck. The top of the truck, the cabin of the truck. And this bright brush is really helping create this effect because using the flat brush, the bright is, has more control because it's kind of a shorter, shorter bristles but also I can turn it on its side to get into more narrow areas and then I can use the full width when I have larger areas to fill in. So right there I added a little bit more white to get that bed to stand out. And then I'm kind of painting around the door. So for the actual door I did all up and down strokes with a little bit more white than the red. So kind of outlining the outside of the door, but I want the whole thing to be 
up and down and that white kind of gives it that vintage sort of old look in the truck and then I'm occasionally still grabbing the quinacridone red to get some areas to be a little bit darker Okay, that's my base of my truck. And then I'm just going to do a few touch-ups in there. The second coat where some of this red is still showing through. Maybe a few touches of the darker red right there. Don't forget to take a step back and look at your painting from a distance. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the black. This is the carbon black. That's what that black is labeled on the Americana. And a 10-0 liner, this is that very tiny round brush and we're gonna get in here and we're not gonna outline the entire truck we're just gonna outline some areas of the truck so I basically kind of copied my teal truck and outlined the same areas that I did with the teal truck so I'm gonna go in there do some of the fenders outline those areas this back exhaust fill that in solid black and then the whole bottom of the fender I know you need a steady hand for this. Um, if you have a fine tip paint pen that happens to be black, that's something that you can do. Or you can just kind of skip this step with the outline. If you don't like the look of that outlining, um, that's up to you. It's your painting. You could change the rules and do your own thing. So I colored the, um, I painted the handle in and then get this bottom part. And I'm going to paint this part of the door on the right and on the bottom. And then the truck bed. in the inside of the window. And then I'm just going to kind of add a few touch-ups here and there where some of that red should be filled in using that fine detail brush. Next, I'm going to go back to my bright brush and paint the tires in. So I'm not going to worry about that circle inside of a circle, um, but I am going to use my T-square ruler to make sure these wheels are lined up. And so I'm just painting this entire circle in and I'll do when this black dries all the way I'll go back and paint that white circle that's on top of it
And then I'm going to use my T-square ruler again because I'm going to make sure that the bottom of both the wheels are kind of lined up. Because knowing me, I would have done it completely crooked with, without the uh, ruler. So that's kind of nice. And then I'm going to fill this wheel in too. Next, I'm going to rinse my brush, pat it dry, and load it with a titanium white. You did not see me do that because it's fast forward, but it's kind of a dry brush sort of thing going on. I, I made sure this brush was dry and just with the white, and I'm just dragging down with the white. So the white is kind of fading, and I still want that blue to show through. So just lightly dragging. Some areas might be brighter, some areas might not be so bright. Um, the effect I was getting was, well, the effect that I'm going for is more of a translucent effect here. So not solid white, but see-through white. Okay, still using that number four brush. And okay, so here's our tree. I'm going to use the brush to outline the tree first, but not outline it like I'm drawing it. I'm outlining it like I'm painting strokes. And I'm not really following my drawing. If you want to follow the exact thing that you trace, that's fine. But I'm just using my brush to kind of outline it first. Okay. And then I'm going to use my brush because I need to white this tree out. It's got to be a white base first because of the dark colors underneath. I started at the bottom and my strokes are kind of going... Um, kind of curved um, I'm dragging each stroke down so dragging it down dragging it down um, and I'm trying to create the texture of that tree so I'm using the brush kind of on its side and dragging it down curving it a little bit and yes there's still going to be a lot of blue showing through and that's okay that's what I want so I'm going to wait for that to dry before adding the green there's a little bit overlapping the truck okay um, while the white of that tree is dry, I'm going to add my snowman. So think about the placement of the snowman. I don't want the truck running that snowman over. <laughs> but I made the bottom of the snowman kind of lined up with the bottom of the fender of the truck. So i um, painting just the three circle snowman. And using that bright brush, painted a circle. So this is the largest circle of the snowman. And then I'm going to paint the second circle. And of course, each circle is getting slightly smaller. And then the top circle is the smallest. And notice that they're overlapping each other just a bit. Okay. So now that this white is still wet, I'm going to do my shading now. So it's a little scary, um, bear with me. So we have the Seraline Blue. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the bottom part of the snow, but with the Seraline Blue. So I still have white on my brush. I loaded it with the Seraline Blue and kind of, kind of mix the two together. So I have a light Seraline Blue. Now that white is still wet on the snowman. So we're gonna get a wet on wet blending thing going on here. And I'm gonna do a curve. So there's my curve. And because that white is still wet, I'm going to be it's going to allow me to blend it back in. Um, but you might need to grab a little bit more white on your brush to get it to blend in um, more smoother. And then I'm going to switch sides so my arc is going. Okay, so in the middle it goes straight and then your arc goes the other way. And then you want to kind of pay attention to how the circles are overlapping each other. So it helps to start at the bottom snowball and work your way up to get them to overlap each other. 
So I rinsed my, that blue off the brush, grabbed just the pure titanium white, and I want this far left side to be just a kind of a pure white. I know my hand is covering that area. So I'm using the white to kind of blend that blue that's still there. Okay, so we have a nice blue shadowy snowman. The next step, I'm going to show you how to do some shadows underneath the truck and the snowman. And I'm going to water down some Seraline blue. So I'm going to grab some Seraline blue and dip my brush in the water, grab it, and get that watered down. So kind of an ink consistency with the Seraline blue. And then underneath the wheel, I'm just going to kind of do little zigzag strokes to form a shadow. So it should be light and very thin because it's watered down. And then um, try to get your shadow to kind of form a circle sort of thing going on. And then the bottom part is straight. Same thing on the front wheel. And then this bottom part is a straight line. And then kind of messing with the shadows here a little bit. Same thing with the snowman. So left and right sort of zigzag strokes and it's gonna form sort of the snowman shape. Um, so what I'm doing right now is doing these little X strokes because I wanted that shadow to blend in a little bit more with the snow to get some texture in the snow. So I'm going to grab some more titanium white here and I do some blending. And I'm flip flopping my brush so I'm making like those X strokes. Uh, you can call them scribble strokes. It's almost like I'm scribbling right now to get that blue and white to blend. So it's just creating some texture on the bottom of the snow. Now my white in the tree is dry and I'm going to load my palette with two different greens. I'm using thalo green yellow and the sap green. So a dark green and a light green. And a number four bright. Starting with a thalo yellow green I'm going to do bottom up. So I'm dragging these strokes. So imagine this tree having a whole bunch of like each a different row so I'm gonna alternate my colors for each row so this is my next row so I'm grabbing the sap green now and letting those branches overlap the thalo green I'm gonna switch to the other green so it's a pattern here and do the third row so I'm dragging each branch down I'm using the side of the brush to do these strokes not using the full width and uh, almost, I guess I'm not really flip-flopping the brush. I'm just kind of loosely dragging it to kind of do the, like a curved stroke. And again, alternating the colors. And when you go from the bottom up, it allows the branches to overlap each other as you go up to give it that look of a Christmas tree. Okay, so there's my tree. And I'm going to do this wreath, wreath with the phthalo green yellow. And I'm going to paint these little X's. Kind of sketch out my circle here. But I'm painting little X's with that flat part of the brush, the chisel, the tip of it. And then next I'm going to do titanium white and then, then again I'm painting little X's but since these are overlapping they're kind of meshing together and they're no longer looking like X's. They're looking like um, kind of jumbled 
it's supposed to look like a wreath. It's starting to look like a wreath. So, and then I grabbed the other green. I used both greens for this. And again, more X's. Nice color variation in the wreath. And then I grabbed just a little bit more white. Little X strokes all the way in that circle. So next I'm going to do the details in the snowman. This is always the fun part when we get to decorate a snowman. So I have brown and orange, um, burnt umber and cad orange. And of course I'm going to use my very tiny liner brush. I'm going to start with the hat, and the hat is black. I'm using the black that's already on my palette. Um, if your black has dried, then you can load it with some more black. Um, or you can customize your snowman. You don't have to do a top hat. You can do a snowman hat if you would like. And then I'm going to go in and do the eyes and the mouth and the coal buttons. Okay. Then I'm going to do the arms. So I'm going to paint some branches for his arms. This is the only time this brown shows up in this painting. So. Um, if you're trying to simplify colors, you can always just do the branches with black. And then next is the cad orange nose. This is the only time this nose shows up in this painting. Or uh, this cad orange shows up in this painting. Next, I'm going to switch to a number five round brush and I'm going to paint the snow on the truck. So all the flat areas of the truck are going to have this white snow build up on top of the truck. So I'm going to load my palette with some fresh titanium white, get my number five round and paint the snow. And then I'm doing the middle part of the tires as well. So that black, black area has dried and we can put the white on it. So paint a circle inside of a circle. And then I'm going to double check to make sure my circles are lined up. They are not on the top, so I'm going to kind of adjust that a bit. And then a little bit of white on the tree. Just a little bit.
And then I'm grabbing black to paint a bow using that 10-0 liner. So I grab black and then I'm doing little dots of red on the wreath for berries. And then I'm going to get cadmium yellow medium and I'm going to finger paint these lights. So it's kind of the concept of painting the uh, lightning bugs if you did that painting. But I am pressing with my finger and I'm kind of smearing out to make the glow of the light. There's not a lot of paint on my fingertip. I'd say just about a drop of that yellow for each of the lights. And then if you want colored lights, you can use a different finger to do the color lights. So you can um, grab whatever colors are on your palette. For the green, I tried to see if the green would show up. It just didn't because it's the same color green in the tree. But then for blue, I added a little bit of white to the blue. Um, it wasn't, didn't give as much contrast with the blue, but it shows up a little bit. Okay, and then when you run out of fingers, you can grab your little tiny brush and do like a little white dot in the center to make it look like those lights are glowing. So a completely different style of Christmas lights. Uh, kind of beats painting in all those little individual bulbs. And then I'm going to see if that does anything. If I try smearing the white, it doesn't really do anything. Okay, and then now that the star is dry, I'm going to paint it in yellow. I ended up goofing on this star. I waited for it to dry and went back in with Prussian blue to outline, re-outline my star because it turned into this giant awkward looking star. But again, that's the beauty of acrylic paints you can paint over. And you see the more I try to fix it, the more awkward it gets. It turns into this giant star. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. And now I'm going to do my snowflakes. So this is a 10-0 liner. And I would paint like an asterisk sort of thing. And then I do these angle lines on the um, end of the line. And this is another step. If you have a white paint pen, that would come in handy for doing the snowflakes. Better control with the paint pen. Or you can use the 10-0 uh, liner. This, um, I really like this Zen brush. It's holding the, um, cause a lot of the times the really fine detail brushes, um, they don't hold the tip after like three or four paintings, but this one is doing really good so far. And then there's a little black in the middle of that circle. So the painting is almost complete, just the few minor things, a few minor touch-ups here and there, maybe a little bit more green on the tree down here. So you decide, take a step back and look at your painting, see um, if there's anything you kind of need to fill in a little bit more or 
you want to add anything. I know there's already a lot of details in this painting. I think the last thing that I'm going to do is fix my star here. So I just loaded it with the Prussian blue. The yellow is for the most part dry. And I'm just going to kind of fix my shape here. But yeah, other than that, this painting has come to its conclusion and I hope you enjoyed another one of my painting tutorials. I am looking forward to bringing you some more Christmas holiday themed paintings. Don't forget to share your painting with me and everybody else on the Facebook page and or upload a picture on one of the Pinterest pins or you can always email me your picture or private message me on Facebook your pictures so um, I love to see your picture one more thing uh, is this green scarf that I decided to add on the snowman but that was the last thing I promise thanks for watching <laughs>